DEI. So we all know DEI. We all understand the, 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 the moral evil of DEI. But it's interesting. Uh, there was an article in the Wall Street Journal that kind of interesting in the sense that it presents kind of the, the corporate justification for this uh, and how it all started. So it turns out, I mean, there's been cause for diversity forever. I mean, in 1990, I think it was 99, I think it was 99 in the Wall Street Journal, there was a famous, they published a famous letter that, uh, that uh, um, T.J. Rogers, T.J. Rogers, the CEO of God, Cyprus, Cyprus Semiconductor, uh, published, he had been... He had received a letter from a couple of nuns who represented the investment committee of the nunnery, of a nunnery, of a Catholic charity or something like that. And they demanded that he add women to the board of directors. So the issue of diversity goes back to the 90s. And he wrote this brilliant letter in the, in the Wall Street Journal. It, it really is good. T.J. Rogers, not accidentally, hugely impacted by Ayn Rand. Hugely, hugely impacted. I once saw him give a talk to a class, and uh, right at the beginning, he wrote Ayn Rand big on the blackboard. He said, if you only read one author, this is who you should read. This is what's the most important thing. This is at his peak when he was a CEO at uh, Cyprus. Anyway, he wrote this letter and saying, look, uh, uh, I hire based on excellence. I hire based on ability. If there's an excellent, uh, able woman, I will hire her. There isn't right now. They will be in the future because more and more women are entering Silicon Valley. They will be. She'll be experienced. But I want experienced people in the sector uh, who, are, who are exceptional. And I'm sure there will be someday. Right now, they aren't. I maximize shareholder wealth. I, that is the standard. That's the only standard I use. And they published it in the Wall Street Journal. So the, the issue of diversity is being pushed for a very long time on American businesses, both in terms of females on the board, female executives, and also in terms of racial issues. But there was always this notion, as TJ expressed it, no, no, what we really want is to maximize shareholder wealth. That is the only prism by which we look at this, and we're focused on that, and that's what we care about. And then in 2015, the renowned consulting firm, management consulting firm of McKinsey, uh, published a report. And in this report, they basically claimed that after having done a significant empirical research, looking at close to 200 firms, they had discovered that there is a clear positive link between profits and executive and board member racial and gender diversity. That indeed, they argued, if you want to maximize shareholder wealth, if you want to be more profitable, then the way to do that is to bring in greater diversity. And the idea was, um, the idea was that uh, people from different uh, skin color and people of different genders bring different uh, uh, experiences, different levels of expertise, different knowledge, and they enhance the ability of a company to function, right? And suddenly, the one argument that corporate leaders had had for not embracing DEI disappeared. So the argument was not only did these people provide role models, uh, uh, you know, they are enhancing the ability of the company to make money. Um, now, since 2015, many, many companies have embraced this. DEI standards have infiltrated corporate America at every level. Boards of directors are now all diverse. But this study has also been cited by regulators to tell companies they're not living up to their fiduciary duty to shareholders if they're not diverse. It's, the study was cited by NASDAQ to say, look, if, if, if you're going to list on our exchange, you need to be diverse because otherwise you're not acting in behalf of shareholders. 
Uh, and so it's been used by activists, obviously, but by managers, by and and but 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 even by regulators, used across the board by people. This makes America more competitive. It makes businesses more profitable. This is a requirement, right? Now, uh, what's interesting about this is that people have tried to replicate the study. So people have tried to look at, is this true? Does diversity actually increase profitability? And of course, now there's a lot more data because now you've got a lot of companies emphasizing diversity. But the reality is nobody can duplicate McKinsey's data. They can't, uh, the results. They can't duplicate the results. Now, McKinsey will not release the data. They won't tell us which companies they used. They won't tell us the names, and they won't release the data that they're using. So academics have tried to study this. They've tried to use all kinds of measures of diversity, all kinds of measure of profitability and shareholder value. And the reality is that they can't find any relationship. Now, what's interesting is they don't find a negative relationship. They just can't find any relationship between diversity and profitability. It doesn't make the company less profitable, but it certainly doesn't make the company more profitable. They've done it on S&P 500. They've done it on other, uh, you know, sets of firms. Now, again, this was used by BlackRock. It was used by, by all these other, I mean, BlackRock actually had a board diversity target of 30%. And when they argued for that, they argued based on the McKinsey study. Uh, and it cannot be duplicated. It cannot be duplicated. So, uh, and now it's public that it cannot be duplicated. Now it's well known it cannot be duplicated. And it's interesting that this study is coming out at this, about the same time that you're seeing corporate leaders in Silicon Valley even, or particularly, coming out and saying, we are only focused on one metric now. We are moving, we are banning DEI, and the only metric we are focused on now is productivity, is profitability, is shareholder worth maximization. And uh, now, uh, you know, we, we, will, we will embrace whatever level of diversity, particularly diversity of experiences and opinion, that we think is going to benefit our executive team is going to benefit our corporate, our, our board room, and I think there's something to those benefits, but only based on merit. And, you know, that is a, a huge, huge shift, huge shift in the way corporations think and, and debunking the McKinsey study is going to take away the, the, the one semi-rational excuse people have for using this. Uh, indeed, if, I mean, a lot of the, the finance people are arguing that if it was true, the diversity helped maximize shareholder wealth, then companies would do it. And indeed, the whole issue would go away because they would be using diversity not in the DEI sense, but they would be using diversity to, to, to get the best people who add value. And it, 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 there, would, there would not be an issue because there would be a, a huge competitive disadvantage to not doing it. But every, again, every paper, every attempt to replicate the McKinsey study has shown that it's just not true. The correlation is zero. The relationship does not exist. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, uh, I like this. The, the, uh, the final sentence in the paper is, investors don't risk 
Oh, I, I, I forgot it. I forgot. I should. I, I forgot to tell you this. So, when this paper came out, um, the uh, it, it, people created funds based on this, right? Uh, so uh, they created funds that were, in a sense, said, "Okay, we'll create a, an instrument, and if diversity increases profitability versus everybody else." Uh, our fund will outperform, and they advertised it this way. This is a a, a a DEI fund, and it will outperform. We'll get you'll get higher returns than everybody else. Now, let me see if I can. Um, yeah, I mean, if uh, this is quoting for the article, if companies could boost their profits as easily as McKinsey suggested, the most diverse firms had a thirty nine percent point thirty nine percent point higher chance of higher than average profit margins than the least diverse, then surely companies, you know, would rush to do this, but surely you could invest just in those and make a profit by investing in the most diverse firms. Right? So a, a number of funds were created in order to try to take advantage of this. Uh, let me see. Um, all right. Uh, so there's an ETF uh, that, 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 that tried to do that, and uh, they, they claimed that they would have higher returns, right? Uh, but none of these ETFs succeeded. Since uh, this particular ETF, since its 2016 launch, the fund's returns have lagged more than 70 by, by more than 70 percentage points behind that of the top 1,000 companies from which it's selected before switching to a, a different, a different uh, gorge. Um, and it's shrunk in size from 400 million to 245 million. So people have drawn their money. McKinsey still stands by its original paper, but again, nobody's willing to, uh, to replicate this. So again, we're seeing a sea change in people's attitudes to DEI and, and to the whole issue of diversity. Uh, we're seeing it across the board. All right, just thought you'd be interested in that. Don't invest in funds that claim the diversity will increase your returns. The moral is the impractical. Sorry, the moral is the practical. God, the immoral is the impractical is what I meant to say. DEI is immoral. It is not based on ability. It's not based on uh, fulfilling the shareholders' uh, the responsibility of shareholders, and surprise, surprise, it's impractical.